it wasn't an inevitability that eventually studios are going to have to go back and produce content that people want to see as opposed to trying to push their political agenda. They were able to stave off the losses for some time by residual money that they had at the studio and also having companies like BlackRock offset some of their losses. But that DEI money is eventually going to dry up and then these studios are going to have to perform on their own. Some of them are probably going to get the picture, other ones not so much. But if they want to actually stay afloat, they're going to have to produce content that people want to see. And that's where these latest rumors are coming out from that park place. The headline, Marvel Studios cleaned house and fired activist producers. A new rumor claims that Marvel Studios cleaned house and fired all activist producers. This latest rumor comes from Film Threat founder Chris Gore. During an appearance on the Critical Drinkers YouTube channel, Gore stated, I do know people who work at Marvel. They have cleaned house. They quietly months ago fired all the producers, could be labeled activists. He continued, unlike Lucasfilm, Lucasfilm is lost. They've lost. They are doubling down on all the nonsense. You will see anything good out of uh, Lucasfilm and Star Wars. That's it. But then he continued on. In contrast, he said Kevin Feige recognizes basically he said that we tried it. It didn't work. He's talking about the phase four. It didn't work. No Kang. None of these side characters that don't have the legacy of the classic characters. And if Deadpool and Wolverine proves anything, they've heard the phrase male and pale is stale. That was spoken aloud across studios. But if you look at box office this year, I would say male and pale is money. And this isn't him saying that all movies have to cater to white people. Far from it. Deadpool and Wolverine were very successful because it was just trying to be a fun comic book movie that everyone can enjoy. Contrast that with movies like the Marvels where they're trying to almost demonize men in order to prop up females because they're trying to cater to a female demographic. And that doesn't seem like a smart strategy, even on the surface, when you're thinking about it, when they're spending that much money on a movie, you would think that the studio would try to attract as much people as possible to the theaters. But you don't do that when you're trying to demonize a large segment of the audience. Some people might point to Barbie as an example, too. It's like, well, they demonize men, right? Well, not if you actually watch the movie. In fact, they actually made the men look pretty good. Uh, Ken is the standout star of that type of movie. Well, I don't know if that was necessarily intentional or unintentional on the part of the filmmakers. I'll give Greta Gerwig a little bit of credit and say that was kind of intentional. And a lot of people who didn't understand that it kind of went over their head, but still, that movie, the fact that it did so well has to do with uh, they're actually trying to do something that appeals to everyone. When you get something like the Marvels where it's only trying to appeal to a small segment of the audience, well, then you're going to get met with failure. Something like Deadpool and Wolverine, everyone enjoys that. There's something for everyone. As a result, that movie is doing really good. Gore also noted, additionally, they fired people that don't know comics. Uh, and this is also a stark contrast to what we've seen with Star Wars in recent years. Uh, Leslie Headland, the showrunner for The Acolyte, famously said that she deliberately hired a writer who didn't know anything about Star Wars, which I don't know why you would do that, but that's the choice that she chose to make. But it's going to be a sea of change that will take years, years. That's why they are announcing this now. We know we screwed up and failed, but look at what's coming. So we're going to get two bad movies, two bad TV shows, and maybe a good Fantastic Four film. And this is pertaining to the fact that Marvel is a big studio that takes years before something is finally realized. So they could be making these changes now, but they're still going to have stuff coming out in the meantime. And those are the things that he's saying are probably going to be bad. And like the upcoming movies, uh, Captain America, Brave New World, Blade, those are supposed to come out before Fantastic Four. Or they have uh, the new show. What is it? Agatha all along. I forget the other show that they have announced, but He's basically saying these things were already in the work before they tried to decide to make these changes and understand that things are going bad for them. So they're probably already lost, but the Fantastic Four movie, there's a chance that that one might succeed. Now, I think it still reeks of some of the problems that we've seen in the past. Uh, for instance, they're having a gender swap Silver Surfer, and I know some people are going to say like, oh no, uh, there's like an obscure person in the comics uh, and it's kind of following that and it's like no it's obvious what they're doing they're still trying to have their cake and eat it too when it comes to that but maybe the movie will be good all around though uh, it'll just have some little things like that off with it some remnants of the old ways so to speak and some people might be thinking it's like well what about deadpool and wolverine because that just came out and that was really good right well you got to understand though that was in a way kind of separate from what we've seen in the mcu because it's not like Kevin Feige and like a lot of his people at Marvel studios had a lot of say. So in that it was basically Ryan Reynolds and Sean Levy were given free reign to kind of do what they want in that movie. That's why they're so freely poking fun at Marvel and other things like that. Obviously the studio could have interjected and kind of gotten in the way of that. But 
I think they started to understand it's like, no, we'll just let them do what they want. And that's why that movie was successful. They saw it was successful. Compare that to the Marvels, which is the peak like DEI MCU. And that was their most biggest failure. So I think they're looking at these two movies and saying like, okay, this is clearly the right path if we want to be profitable as a company. So that's what they're going to do, but it's going to be some time before we finally see those results pay off. Marvel studios did make a huge change at the end of last year on its television side. The Hollywood reporter Boris Kitt shared that the company was revamping its development process. Showrunners will write pilots and show Bibles. The days of Marvel shooting an entire series from the She-Hulk to Secret Invasion, then looking at what's working and what's not are done. And this is kind of where I'm thinking there's some validity to these rumors that Chris Gore is talking about, because we have heard in the past that they're changing up how they're doing things, including having a bunch of layoffs at the studios. In fact, this article from the Hollywood reporter that this article from that park place is referencing. I got that pulled up because I talked about it when it first came out back in uh, October or how they're revamping, how they're doing the shows, because it just makes sense that they would go into it with a plan as opposed to kind of going into a half talk. But Notice what it also says in this article too. It didn't take long to see the problem after Marvel Studios Daredevil Born Again paused production in mid-June during the writer strike. Fewer than half of the series' 18 episodes had been shot, but it was enough for Marvel executives, including Chief Kevin Feige, to review the footage and come away with a clear-eyed assessment. This show wasn't working. So in late September, Marvel quietly let go of head writers Chris Ord and Matt Corman and also released the directors for the remainder of the season as part of a significant creative reboot of the series. The Hollywood Reporter has learned the studio is now on the hunt for a new writers and directors for the project, which stars Charlie Cox as Matt Murdock, a blind lure turned superhero. Last October, when this news was first breaking, I said in my video that I think this is Marvel learning from their past mistakes and trying to take steps in order to fix their errors. I uh, and it's looking like that might actually be the case when it comes to this, at least with this latest news. I'll leave a link to that video in the description of this video if you want to check it out yourself. As far as what Chris Gore is saying about how they're getting rid of a lot of the activists, it really does seem to kind of coincide with what we do know happening at Marvel with them firing a lot of people. Deadpool and Wolverine showed a self-awareness where it looks like they're willing to acknowledge at the bare minimum that there has been problems with the MCU in recent years. And once we see how bad movies like the Marvels did, there's really no denying it that if they want to make money, they have to stop demonizing their biggest demographic, which is honestly white men. And I, like I said before, I don't even think it's necessarily that they have to make movies for white men. They just can't like continue to demonize them and treat them like they're the enemy. If they want to continue to be profitable. And I'm hoping this is going to be something that we see moving forward and that they're just, Going back to making comic book movies that people enjoy, they're not trying to push an agenda or prop up one group by demonizing another group. Just make something fun that everyone can enjoy and we'll have good movies. They'll make money. Everyone wins or they can continue on with how we're seeing with Lucasfilm and Star Wars where they're making something to try to prove a point and all the while people are just upset, don't want to watch it and they're going to lose money. Take your pick, Marvel. Which path do you want to go down? But let me know what you think about all this in the comment section below. And also, if you haven't already, make sure you click that subscribe button if you want to stay up to date with the latest entertainment news. And if you don't mind, click that like button and share the video out there because it really helps out with the channel. Thank you.